I'm sorry, Kira. I don't know where she is. She's normally bang on time. We need this on 916 with a 75 zoom. We need to clear the iris and a better landing spot. Right, Q Kira. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Who's this? Q Kira. Q Kira! This is Lionesses Down Under, connected by EE. -E. Hello and welcome back to Lionesses Down Under, connected by EE. -E. I've been inspired by Ella Toon and got my eyelashes done. What oh, do you think? Your tan is really, it's working for you, that Jill. I'm feeling this. Also, I've got two things to be excited about. We have the big quarterfinal game in less than 24 hours. And also, Kira Walsh is in the house. Woo! Yeah! Woo! That's how everyone's greeted, all right, okay, Kira. All right. Uh, we'll be getting all of the questions that have been put in for you during the show as well. But you can get in touch. Any messages of support, please use the hashtag lionesses down under. Also, I've got a little bit of a surprise for you later on, okay? I'm not going to say what that is just now. But, Kira, look at that smile on your face. Just yeah. you wait. Just <laughs> she you looks wait. a bit scared. To I, know, be yeah. I am to be fair. <laughs> so, Kira, it was so good to have you back for the Nigeria game. How did it feel to be back where you belong on that pitch? Yeah, it was good, I think. Um, always easier being on the pitch than watching. Um, watched the China game with Kyle and it was... Uh, yeah, early goal settled the nerves. Yeah. To you were very nervous. Yeah, yeah I was very was, nervous. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. playing and, and, you know, or watch it with me? I feel like there's, yeah. All right, let's move on. <laughs> okay, right, let's move on. All right. I mean, that match had absolutely everything, didn't it? I mean, 120 minutes, penalties. Everyone was stood at the side of it, nervous. Everyone in the stands was nervous. But have you managed to put that behind you now and just focus on the next game ahead? Yeah, and I think... Jill obviously knows this, but I think when you're playing, you don't feel the, the nerves quite the same. I think it's probably a lot worse for people watching. And yeah, yeah, when we go to penalties, I think you just have that belief that we can go and win. So I was yeah. trying to tell the family, Zach, because you can feel the nerves sometimes. And I'm like, the girls are fine. They're just going <laughs> out there, doing what they love to do. But yeah, Kira, the question on everyone's lips is, how are you feeling? Are you ready for that quarterfinal? Yeah, definitely. I think, yeah, Colombia are a good team, but it's quarter final of the World Cup, so, yeah, everyone's really excited about it. Yeah. Looking at this, I mean, you in training, looks like you're enjoying yourself, the sun's shining. A few of those, though, nice finishes. Some saves as well <laughs> by the keepers, though. That's all I'm going to say. How are you finding training? Yeah, good. Um, yeah, it's nice to be out here. I think, obviously, the weather helps, but it'd be nice if I could score one of those in a game and not just training. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've got to talk about it. It's never nice to go off injured, but particularly to do so in a major tournament, very unlucky. When did you realise that you would be able to bounce back, though, from that set setback in the Denmark match? I think when I seen Jill on the bus afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> we tried to have a little bit of a laugh just to raise spirits. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, you did. Poking fun at me quite a lot, to be fair. <laughs> Don't say that. This wasn't nice to see, though. That yeah. wasn't nice to see at all. Um, was it... Well, everyone's been talking about this. I want to ask this. I want to hear it from you. All right. You said that you're more embarrassed about having to be uh, stretched <laughs> off. Uh, all right. You've got a smile on your face now. It's a story to tell, right? You're back. You're feeling yeah, good. Yeah, I don't want to keep telling that story, Kyle. <laughs> Let's move on then. Let's move on then, Jill. <laughs> there on. we go. Let's move on. So, Kira, I don't want to make this about me, but we did play together <laughs> against Norway 2019 mm. quarterfinal. How do you rise to them occasions? You absolutely smash that game. Why do you always pick? Pictures with bad well, faces. Actually, go through and pick these pictures. But look, how do you rise to, to fair, them occasions? You was probably the player of the match that game. I would say. You reckon? Yeah. Wasn't? You must have had a disaster. <laughs> 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 you weren't passing to me. That's why. <laughs> oh. I mean, you did score in that game, didn't you, Jill? So let's. We, this always happens, all right. We always put the spotlight on Jill, all right. Back to Jill. Uh, <laughs> Kira, how beneficial is it having that experience from games like that? Jill scored in that one. But when you are playing in these quarterfinals, you've been there before. You played against teams like this. It's just going out there and doing it again. Yeah, it's massive, and I think obviously you know Jill had played in tournaments before, so she passed her experience on, and I think it's probably the same for us older players now, kind of doing that with the younger ones and. Yeah, I just think playing in tournaments in general, it really helps going forward. Yeah, and obviously Colombia next. What do you make of them? Anything you've seen in analysis of any games that you've watched? Um, I've played against quite a few of them in the Spanish league. Um, 
the number nine. I've played against her for Levante and yeah, she's very powerful, very quick and yeah, I don't stop running. But I think for us, it's probably just focusing on maybe what we didn't do so much against Nigeria and just focusing on our possession game and trying to play good football, I think. Yeah. And what would it mean to you and the team to go through that next round and get to a semi-final of a World Cup? Yeah, it would be massive. And I think, um, yeah, the last World Cup we played in, we got to the semi-final. So I think for us, we would obviously like to try and go one better and beat Colombia and then, yeah, try and have a good game in the semi-final as well. Yeah, and even though we're on the other side of the world, the support in Australia from the England fans, it's been incredible, to be fair. Sometimes I'm in the stadium and there's so many England fans, I feel like we're in a stadium in England. But how much does that support really spur you on when you, you step out onto the pitch with the Lionesses trying to get that win? Yeah, no, for sure. I think when you look round and you can see so many England shirts and obviously when you're playing, you can hear them chanting and yeah. shouting and I think... Obviously, in those difficult moments, you know, we went down to 10 men, I think. Obviously, the crowd really helps that and can help push you through. That's just me and Carl shouting. I know, yeah, we were. We literally <laughs> were playing every pass, every shot, everything. Now, you know, here on Lioness is Down Under, we like to get the previous guest to ask the next guest a <laughs> yeah, question. Okay. Oh, yeah. look at that, I all right. This yeah, we had Ella Toon on the show yesterday and she wanted to ask you this. Brace yourself. Here we go. All right, our kid. My question for you is, who's the best number 10 you've played with? Oh. Yeah, that's putting a bit of pressure on me there. Oh. Isn't it? Pressure whatsoever. Tooney asking that question. Do you know what? I, I do really like playing with Tooney. I think she picks up really good pockets of space. And, yeah. um, I think she's intelligent. I think you have to understand football to appreciate how good she is sometimes. I think, yeah, very intelligent, picks up great spaces. But Aitana Bonmati is also a... Very, very good midfielder, so she's definitely up there as well. She predicted that. She, she did, said, I'm yeah. Gonna yeah. Ask <laughs> and then she's going to go Bon Matty. Yeah. <laughs> so, Kira, tell us about your grassroots journey. You were in the Blackburn Rovers Academy. What was your time like there? Yeah, it was it was amazing, I think. Um, made some best friends for life there. George Stanway was there as well and Ella Toon. And, um, yeah, I just think it's where I really enjoyed playing football and kind of probably where I found my love for it, really. Well, I'm pleased to say that we can go 10,536 miles to Blackburn's Academy training ground now, where Abby McCarthy has a familiar face who wants to say hello. Abby, welcome to Lionesses Down Under. It's great to have you here. How are you doing? Really good, thank you. Hi, guys. And Kira, you're definitely going to recognise who is next to me. Nick Jackson Cooney, who was your coach from age 11 to 15. And you're on, basically, Nick, to to give us the juice, what was a, a young Kira like to coach? I'd like to say a really good player and really good to have around, but she was a bit of a nightmare at times. Oh, okay, oh, okay. We had a nucleus of one or two girls that did like to have a laugh around. And I can name names now. <laughs> so, yes, Kira was one, and another girl, Laurie Dawes, um, and Chloe Adams. They always swang around together and, yeah, always chatting away. And I spent a lot of my time going, oh, I say, Get on with your session. So, yeah. But to be fair on them, once we started the sessions, they were excellent during the session and, and really put a good performance in. And it, it always ran over into games. Um, where when we were playing games, they were switched on right from the beginning and um, put us in a really good stead against other teams. And I think that's why we had a real successful group of players Love moving that. forward. And it's not just me asking the questions. I know that Jill's got a burning question for you in the studio as well. Yeah, hi, Kira. I hope you do recognise that man. <laughs> <laughs> but does seeing Nick and Abby out there bring back some good memories? Yeah, to be fair, I was waiting for him to say that about laughing and joking around. Um, <laughs> yeah, we did you see that quite a bit. But no, it does bring back some good memories, I think. <laughs> yeah, he was probably my first coach that probably moved me into midfield and... Um, yeah, where I really found that I love the position. So, yeah, no, it, it does bring back good memories. That's a, a great insight. I could see the little smile on your face yeah, when he said uh, that you were a nightmare. <laughs> you knew it was coming, didn't you? Abby, bring you back some good memories there, aren't you? Absolutely. Nick, so actually you're responsible for Kira Walsh being in midfield. You've got to take I some am. credit for that, right? I'd like to take a bit of credit. Um, <laughs> yeah, because the, the first 12 months I, um, I played her at centre-half and mm -hmm. she did a really good job there, to be fair, along with a girl called Anna Godfrey. Um, but it was only during training that um, you saw that she had an, another aspect to her game and the main part was the passing as we used to do a lot a lot of passing and moving sessions and um, you could see it from there and also to be fair talking to her mum and dad during parents evenings we spoke about it quite a few times and um, I always knew that if we were struggling a little bit or we needed that bit more going forward Kira's the one right Kira would go up into midfield 
So after that first 12 months, yeah, it, it just became a very natural position after that. She was a midfield player in that rate. Love and, it. and she was the one that like knitted everything together, if you know what I mean. Yeah. From Which what she right does for, for England now. Do you think you could tell, even at that stage when you were coaching her, that she could go on to play professionally? Yeah. But, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm really, really glad on how far she's gone. I think it's been excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, but you could see something then. Yeah, you're like one or two, and you thought, flipping out, she's got something special. And, and we spoke about it many times, myself and the other coaches, and, and it was always a pleasure to see and and to see her go from where she is, where she was then with myself, um, onto like Man City, and then onto now Barcelona in England. Uh, yeah, it's brilliant, and you, and you could see it. But yes. Yeah, it's, it's really good to see now, especially at the World Cup. Yeah. So. Kira Walsh obviously doing bits as always, but there's mm. a couple of other players who've come through this academy as well. Our Georgia Stanway and Ella Toon as well. What's in the water in Blackburn? Well, I'd like to take a bit of credit with the coach. <laughs> um, but no, I think it, I think because we set up a Centre of Excellence early doors, um, we were one of the early ones um, within Lancashire and North West, that we, we, had, we were very professional in what we did and players started to see that early doors. So we started to get a nucleus of players coming in and um, I think we just built up a reputation early on. And, and like I said, we did attract a lot of good players. Georgia, like I said, coming from Barrow, um, Kira, obviously from Rochdale, but we had, they were coming from all over to come to Blackburn, which helped me because <laughs> I had an outstanding team. And yeah. To be fair, over five years, I think that was with Kira. I think we only lost one, maybe two games. Wow. Which was like unbelievable. This um, incredible so record, isn't it? Yeah, and we're yeah. always the team to beat. Um, so it was really good. And I do remember actually trying to get Katie to get um, Katie Selham to come and join us as well. But it never quite happened. Uh. Yeah. So we would have had a, another team, another good player on there. Yeah. I'm going to stop grilling you for mm. now, actually, and yep. bring somebody in who is hoping to follow in your footsteps, Kira. This is the amazing Lucy, who I've seen absolutely killing it in training today. Lucy plays for the under-14s here. I mean, how does it feel for you to see a player like Kira Walsh Playing for England, who played on these very pitches, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's inspiring. Stop it, you're getting all shy now. She was telling me, Kira, you're her favourite player. So what's your big question for Kira, please? Um, what are your superstitions? That's a good question. Oh, that is a good question. Um, I have quite a few, to be fair. So I'll always have the same pre-match meal before a game. Um, and I'll always tie my left shoelace before my right. And I actually wear my shin pads on the opposite legs. Don't know why, but I've always done it. So, yeah. Shin pads on the opposite legs. I mean, that must feel that must feel really strange, but it's working. So don't don't change a thing. Uh, Lucy, where are you going to be watching the quarter final? Obviously, we're in the quarter final of a World Cup. Where are you going to be watching, and who will you be watching with? Uh, I'm going to watch it with my family at home. Oh, amazing! Feel free to shout out your family now. <laughs> oh well, have an amazing time. And do you think we're going to win? Are you backing us all the way? Yeah. Can I get a come on England? Come on England. There we go. Well, you better get back to it. I don't want to don't get you in trouble. Thank you so much, Lucy. Amazing to see you. And give, give Kira a little wave before you go. Amazing. There you go, Nick. I mean, you must just be bursting with pride. Somebody that you've coached <laughs> is, is playing, playing for England. I mean, every time you switch on the TV, do you just get like a bit of a buzz? Oh, I do. Doing this now, who'd have thought all those years ago, I'd be the one interviewing Kira. <laughs> it was one of the kids playing uh, yeah. in my coaching session. So, yeah, very proud. And I think the last time I saw Kira was at a sports awards. And I was stood at the bar and she was there with her mum. And she turned around and she said, I've just been picked for the England women's senior team. Amazing. And it's like, that's unbelievable. Yeah. And it's like, that's brilliant. And um, ever since, I have I have kept track on it. I've, me and her mum follow on um, Facebook. So... I, I see a lot of what's happening and everything. So it's um, just to see her, even just when she went to playing for Man City in first team, and then you see, oh, she's at Barcelona. And it's like, wow, this is brilliant. And yeah, I do I do keep track each and everywhere. So it's, it's really good to see. So it's, yeah, very proud. And obviously there'll be loads of young girls and boys watching this. What advice would you give to them if they're wanting to get into the game? I think now's the ideal time, um, thanks to the ladies team, um, European champions, quarterfinal at World Cup. I think the FA now within England are putting a lot of money and time into women's football and the amount of teams that's around now, um, now's the time for women's football. And I know there's a lot of girls teams around where I live in, Darwin Blackburn, and I'd just say just get in touch with your local team, get in touch with your FA um, and just get involved because there's, there's definitely other players out there that one day will take over 
from where not just Kira is, but the rest of the team. So 100%. let's get them involved now. Yeah, so we need that next generation. That's yes. for sure. Nick, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. I'm going to hand back Thank to you, you legends in the studio. Good luck, Kira. Thanks. Good luck indeed. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Abby, Nick, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Keep up the great work as well. Kira, just a quick mention about Blackburn. I mean, a club that obviously you started your journey on. Bit of a message for your time there for them. How special were they for you? Yeah, I just think thanks for everything you did for me. Thanks for taking your time to coach, even though it wasn't always easy by the sounds of it. <laughs> um, but no, I think you instilled the right way for me to play football is getting the ball down, passing and it, um, yeah, I think it's kind of got me to where I am now is learning that from such a young age. So, yeah, I appreciate it. And I wouldn't be sat here playing for Barcelona in England as it wasn't for, for you lot at the academy. Oh, that's so lovely. Thanks so much, Abby and Nick. I can see all them young girls quickly changing the shin pads found in the background. <laughs> <laughs> but have you got a message for them young players that want to follow in your footsteps? Any um, advice? Yeah, I just think, just enjoy it, I think. That's when I play my best football, I think, just going out there and having fun, not thinking too much, not overthinking about the game, just go and, yeah, just go and have fun and, and do what feels good when you're on the pitch. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, um, thank you, guys. We'll see you soon. I hope that you can go and take that on and pass it on to all the players that are behind. Nick, I know you've got to get ready in that session. Go and get involved in the rondo. I can see them <laughs> setting it up without you. <laughs> Thank yes. you. <laughs> right, brilliant. Well, as always, here on Lionesses Down Under, we love to hear from you guys at home. And you're right, some great questions that we even steal them sometimes and pretend that they're our own. But it's this part of the show where we actually give you the credit for that. We've got some now, haven't we, for Kira Jill? So let's see what you got. So Anissa wants to know, who has the best laugh in the squad? Oh, I don't think I've ever been asked that question before. Um... Toonie's got a pretty good laugh, to be fair. Yeah, I think yeah. I would have said her, and yeah. she is always Toonie. laughing as well. Also, Lorena got in touch on Instagram to ask, what does a typical evening in camp look like? Honestly, not that exciting, to be <laughs> fair. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we tend to have the afternoon off because we train in the morning, then people are getting treatment with the physio, doing a bit of recovery, and then it's just dinner. And yeah, obviously at a World Cup, we watch the other games, but it's really boring when there's no other games on, so brushed up on your dart skills yeah are you trying to oh, no, are, are you trying to throw it in there that you beat me at round the clock you I thought, said it yeah, you said it there you go okay. thank you there yeah Kyle beat me at round the clock yeah. <laughs> I want to get in there as well whenever I see Kira she never makes us a cup of tea on the evening and I think you should always look after your guests right See, she's got nothing to say. Yeah, but I'm not say. the only one who sat there. Nothing oh. to say. <laughs> nothing to say. And last one, Dixie's Babe on Instagram wants to ask, what is your favourite Spanish dish? Don't say tapas. <laughs> <laughs> um, so pretty much sometimes, I don't know if it's a Spanish dish, but the girls eat it. It's like rice with tomato sauce and a fried egg on top and then they kind of like chop it up and mix it together. So like oh, egg fried rice? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's really not like egg fried rice. I think it is. What, does egg fried rice have tomato sauce in it? <laughs> a new egg variation, there we go. The Spanish egg fried rice then. I'll go for that. <laughs> there we have great insight just there. That's how you play so well, the egg uh, fried rice. Maybe. Right, well, we've got more random questions for you, but this time you get to choose. They're all anonymous and okay. they're all from your teammates as well, all right? But they won't, you won't know who they're from. Okay. Serena's even sneaked one in there. Keep on saying this, no one's picked it yet. Pick any, you can open it, and then uh, you can fire away with the question and you get to answer it as well. You know, I can't see a thing with these eyelashes on. <laughs> <laughs> Your tongue looks great though, Jill. Honestly, I'm like... <laughs> right, I'm what does the uh, question well. say? I can't get it Who out. asked if you have to read it out? Was it Jordan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which bad movie do you secretly enjoy? Ooh. Ooh. What defines a bad movie? Well, Jill, this isn't a bad movie, but I found this out. Jill's never watched Cool Runnings. I know. Really? I haven't, yeah. I've never watched Cool I'm Runnings. I'm not really a movie watcher, though, but I've added it to my list. I've got a list. What's the, the bad movie that you actually enjoy? I was watching Princess Diaries earlier. Ooh. Is that a bad movie, though? Is it a bad movie if you enjoy it? Oh, wow. Oh, we're getting deep. That is it? Yeah, that's my thing, like, what defines a bad movie? Well, yeah. is there any that you, everyone else says is a bad movie, but... Princess Diaries? Oh, I don't think it's a bad movie, but it's a 
Ooh. one that I watched today. So, Well, something that you will enjoy. On Lionesses Down Under, we like to bring the best guests. And this is one of my best friends and Lionesses legend, Anita Asante. How are you doing, Anita? Welcome to Lionesses Down Under. Oh! oh. I was going to say thanks for getting up early, but <laughs> I bet you've been kept awake anyway. Look at that. Oh. Hi, everyone. Oh. Oh. Hey. Anita, it's brilliant to have you both here on Lionesses Down Under. How much have you been enjoying the tournament and how pleased are you just at how England are performing and getting to those quarterfinals as well? I've been loving every single minute of the tournament. I've been think it's been fantastic. The quality on the pitch, you know, seeing all this world class talent, um, seeing Kira recover and get back as well. <laughs> I think is really good, obviously for England. And it's great to see that we've managed, you know, they've managed to progress as well, which is great. We know that you do a fantastic job in the punditry. So, what have you made of Colombia so far in this tournament, and what do England have to do to progress? Well, I think Colombia are a little bit unpredictable, you know, in the way they play, but they, they're they aggressive, aren't they? And they're dynamic in attack and they've got some really good, creative individuals that make things happen. Um, and But they take risks as well, as we saw against Germany, you know, the last minutes of the game going forward, trying to get that goal, exposing themselves, leaving themselves short at the back. So I think really for England, it's, you know, playing the way they did against China, you know, finding that those relationships again, enjoying the football that they're playing uh, and stopping Colombia from those transition moments will be probably quite key for them. And um, I mean, you've just touched on it briefly there, but I like making Kira blush uh, a little bit. All right. So let's talk about <laughs> her a little bit more. How much of a boost would it have been to get Kira back in the starting eleven earlier this week? It's a massive boost because I think we've all been debating as pundits, you know, what does England do if Kira is not available? But I think because of Kira's ability, her class, you know, we, we, we've talked about putting two players in there, three players in there, just to make up the difference of what Kira can do in terms of breaking pressure, uh, you know, with her passing ability, but also the way she rolls out of pressure, the way she reads the game and, and the spaces that she occupies. So for me, I think it's it's pivotal that we have Kira back in the team. And I, I don't want to make you blush too much, Kira, <laughs> but, you know, she's one of my favourite players to watch as well. So, uh, you know, I'm excited to see how... We're able to utilise her, in, especially in the build-up play, to, to to join the attack. Well, Anita, me and you did have to play in a two in midfield. <laughs> Maybe we weren't good enough to do a single wall. I didn't um, have the legs. I had the legs. <laughs> and I didn't have the skill. <laughs> 2011 World Cup, what makes it extra special playing on the world stage? I think, for me, because we went through, obviously, the youth ranks together, um, do, trying to achieve something with your mates. Do you know what I mean? Like for me, that was the big thing, being in the world stage, um, but having fun, trying to do something big with your with your mates and, and also taking in different cultures. I feel like football has allowed us to sort of experience so much, especially in the international stage. And, you know, you know, don't always get the opportunity to play all, all this other world-class talent. So for me, that's what I really enjoyed about it too. I always talk about this when we get to see those pictures there. What a team that was. We had a throwback picture on of all of you uh, playing together. I want to talk about this, though. I mean, what was it like actually <laughs> playing against Jill Scott? Uh, and how good actually was she? How difficult was she as well playing against? <laughs> well, it was always difficult because I always knew I had to like make sure I ate loads of pasta, uh, got that Lucasade on board because she doesn't stop moving. <laughs> and she just is, you know, constantly a proper eight, you know, up and down, box to box. Um, and we used to call her Go Go Gadget because once you think you got past her, <laughs> somehow she just claw a, a tackle in and, and win the ball back. So, yeah, for those, you know, she was so, so good and so dyna dynamic. And we always knew we had to be alert to her, like third player runs into the box um, because, you know, she just had the, the intelligence to do that. Jill, how's that feel? You're I blushing now as well. I know, yeah. that feels brilliant. I feel like I could go and play in this quarterfinal. <laughs> uh, and Anita, you just mentioned about how good it is to watch Kira. What was it like playing against Kira as well? Because we've got another picture of you two uh, going head to head. I mean, what was that like? <laughs> To be honest, I feel like I never got close enough to her <laughs> most of the time. So, um, you know, she just has such great ball control for me and you know her ability to link the defensive play into the midfield third 
third and all, and through the thirds is what makes her so special. Um, and, and for me, it's like the, the tough thing about her was always knowing what direction is she going to move into? Where is she going to play that pass? Because she was so comfortable going in either direction and using either foot. So, you know, this is why I think we're really lucky with this kind of generation of talent we have at, as well in England at the moment. Oh. And Neat, where will you be watching the match on Saturday? I'm guessing... You can't head to any pubs at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to say I was going to try to head to a pub. No, um, yeah, no, I'd like to be watching it. Uh, <laughs> I'll be in Manchester, actually, so I will be trying to find a local haunt to watch with local supporters. Aww. And whilst we've got you here as well, I mean, have you got a message for Kira for the rest of the team ahead of that game against Colombia? Yeah, just, you know, believe in yourselves. You are such an amazing team. You have the quality there. Um, enjoy it, most importantly, you know, and trust trust what you do, trust each other and, and support each other out there. Neat, thanks so much for calling in today. Enjoy the game tomorrow and give that little lioness's cub a big hug Aww. from us. Look at that. Aww. So cute. <laughs> oh. oh, so cute. Thanks, Anita. See you soon. Good luck, guys. Yeah. Good luck, just, Kira. I could have just watched the baby. Oh, yeah. That was a nice episode. surprise, actually. Oh, <laughs> lovely. But, Kira, we've seen in this World Cup you can take pretty much anything that's been thrown at you. But the toughest test to date, can you take on... Dum-dum-dum! The Tower. <laughs> Are you up for it? Yeah, I have to beat now. You have to be, yeah, you've got no choice. But well, whilst you get into big game mode, here's a little reminder of how Kira's teammates have done so far. Right, let's get 30 seconds on the clock. Three, two, two one, go! go. Quick up, come you on! Need to go quick. Right, you've I'm got half the time. You need to be quick. You've only had 10 seconds. Kyle, I'm not appreciating your commentary. Oh, do not oh, tumble oh, the tower. Oh, get two older oh, ones. There oh, we go. My God, two God, at God. a time. Wow! 10 seconds. Can you? Can you? Two. Oh, get them up. Oh, oh, oh. Quick, quick, quick. Ah. You was... said pull it! <laughs> Can you get another one? Another one? Quick, quick, quick. No! Oh. <laughs> 113 Woo! seconds. <laughs> I'm Come so on. scared right now. <laughs> so, Kira, I know you're laughing now. You seem nice and chilled. So the rules are that you have to build the tower as high as you can in 30 seconds using two blocks. You can take them both out at a time if you want, any technique you want. The gold ones are worth 10 points though, so you do need to try and get them ones, okay? If you think the tower's going to tumble, you can shout freeze, but don't do that because it's boring. <laughs> You're not taking it serious. Come on, right, let's have a look at the leaderboard. <laughs> Neve Charles is at the top, 113 centimetres. That's who you want to topple at the top. Ella Toon yesterday got seriously competitive, but she ended mid-table, all right, she took her time. So I'm not going to scream and shout too much at you, but all I'm saying, is you've only got 30 seconds, Kira. So I know you're Grace, you've got Grace, you've got elegance when you're playing football. Yeah. Here, you just need to top the tower, all right? Get it to as high as you can with as many points. 10 points for a gold, five points if you don't get one. Feeling confident? Yeah, a little sure. tip because I could never give you football ones. If you just like tap around, some are looser than others, okay? Oh, yeah. So like a little woodpecker. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Right. right, come on, Kira, you can do this. Let's get 30 seconds on the clock. Just got... Ready? Three, three two, one, go! Go on, Kira. Right, here go we on. go. Oh, straight Maybe in, straight in. Very nice. Yeah. You can come take on, two at a time. Right, you've got five points. Well done. Is that it? That's yeah. it. Come on, you need to hurry up. You're so You've had chill. ten seconds already. You do this tower like how you Oh, come on, you need to go. You need to go. I'm sorry. I've said I'm not going to shout anymore. I'm very stressed. <laughs> You've only got 10 seconds left. You've only got 10 points. Get a gold. Get a gold. Just go for a gold. Come on. Five, four, three. Get one more. Get one more. Get one more. Quick, quick. Right, there we go. Time's up. Oh, 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 oh. Well, you're just not bothered about the tower. <laughs> Uh, it's not really competitive, it's not football. Right. Well, there we are. There Let's we... see the height. So you've got one or three well, is the height. I didn't height. come last. You didn't come last. You no, got, you didn't got come 10 last. points though, because the goal doesn't count because you didn't complete the um, the level. Please don't look at me like that, Kira. I'm sorry. Well, you didn't say that. One or oh, three, oh. 10 it's points. It's always my fault. It's always it's my always fault. It's always your fault, Kyle. Kyle. Right, where does that take us? Uh, okay, 10 points. Hey, all right, okay, respectable. Below Mary. How, how, Mary how are you feeling about that? 
Yeah, I'm all right with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well all done. Right, well, well um, done. Well, I just want to give you something just to remind you of the fantastic time. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> that you've had on the show. And also just to remind you that although I'm not on the pitch with you anymore, I am always your number one fan. Oh, thank you. That's I said nice. that was really <laughs> hard. Well, it was, was really emotional. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, that's your lot for Lionesses Down Under, connected by EE today. Everyone in the studio is the busiest studio we've had so it far. Is. Give a round of applause for Kira Walsh. Woo! Woo! We're going to be taking a break tomorrow as the Lionesses take on Columbia. So wherever you are watching the game, we really hope you enjoy it. Yes, and we'll leave you with some good luck messages for the team from some quite familiar faces. There's only one thing left to say, Cal. There is. Come, Come on, England! England! Just a quick message for the Lionesses. We are all cheering for you. We're all rooting for you. We know you're one of the best teams in the world. Now go and prove it. All the McLarens behind you, the whole country is behind you, and we wish you the very best of luck. All the best. Hi guys, Danny White here. Just want to wish you all the best in the World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. You've got this. Can't wait to watch. Come on, England! All the very best to the Lionesses over in Australia. Bring it home. Hi girls, Heather Knight here. Massive, massive good luck for the World Cup in Australia. We're all behind you, you're gonna smash it. Good luck to everyone at the World Cup. Have fun, make sure you enjoy yourself and get to that final. Hi everybody, just wanted to wish you the very best of luck. Uh, you're doing a brilliant job and keep it going.